But yeah, you saw the cust uh, you saw the standard lineup for Math Team Plus Nick, but they have clearly changed up their strategy now, swapping around pretty much everybody but the AD carry. Yeah. We have Nickel on support blitz, faint in the jungle, garbage bot uh, on that solo lane Nasus. And again, I apologize for the connection right now. I don't know what's going on with the frames. It was moving very smoothly in the first game, and all of a sudden it just started acting up, so... Hopefully it will behave. But, we see the little faction moving out of the base as a 5. Math Team Plus Nick also wisely sticking together as a 5. And it looks like they're going for a delayed invade on the red. We'll see if they decide to go in as a 5 or if they send Sneaky to top lane. Looks like they want to do this as a 5. And oh my gosh, Faint is caught out. He does not have his shadows. Oh, he does. Actually, he did not take a skill yet. Proving me wrong. Very wise of him to not level up a skill yet. Obviously, when you jungle Zed, W is not the ability that you want to start. But he was very smart to not take a skill yet, so he was he did not have to burn Flash. So, a very good escape right there. On the other hand, that does mean that the red will be going down free to the Lotal Faction. And we'll see uh, what the junglers decide to do from there. Sneaky Deeb's already on his way to the top lane, and uh, Blitz and Draven heading down to bot. So we'll be playing uh, standard lanes, 1v1 and 2v2s. As the general will get a very nice leash on that, barely taking any damage. Oh, but Sato getting seen out by a ward gets pulled in, but it's only level 1. So Blitzcrank does not did not yet have his uh, knockup, so not a whole lot of damage right there. And the mid's already trading as uh, Ari. Hello, very nice response by Soul Seizures, flashing very aggressively and taking that first kill for himself at level one. That's that's pretty scary. As uh, Nasus, whenever you see him in competitive play, he's usually seen in the jungle. He used to be top. Uh, he used to be thought of as a top laner a long time ago, but there's a reason why he doesn't top lane anymore. He loses so many matchups 1v1. It's not even funny. Hasn't even hit level 2 yet. So, Sneaky Deeb's already abusing him quite early. But uh, back to the junglers, KT Faint taking away the blue, but at what cost? The flash, though. That flash will keep him alive, but the general is still chasing him. The general does not have his flash, but he just does not want to let him go. I don't think he's going to have a choice, though. Yeah, the general is just going to have to concede that. At least he knows now that Zed's flash uh, is definitely down. <laughs> and Zed dies to the golems. Zed, uh, not really sure why he got greedy right there. But, yeah, that's a really big misstep. After all those heroics to steal the blue, and then he just dies. General out of mana, so he can't really exp uh, put too much pressure onto Ari. He's probably going to have to back up and clear. Uh, a couple camps first and then head back. Not getting that blue really did hurt him though. Jarvan's clear is a whole lot better when he can uh, spam spam attacks freely. Ooh. 
grab a temp there by Blitzcrank, will not go. The minion will uh, block that. And looks like Nasus is kind of getting his footing back again. The lane's more and less neutral now, and he does have uh, the levels. So we'll see how that plays out as it goes on. Both of them opted for a cloth pot start. So... No crazy red pot all-ins from Lee Sin this game. And it looks like Sneaky Deed is opting for the Q max in this lane. We sometimes see him maxing W. But, oh my gosh, is he dead? Yes, he is. The edge of the E was all he needed. And meanwhile, in the bot lane... That was a good closer by, by Sato. Flashing for the kill, very much worth it. Draven had already burned all of his resources, so... Trading resources for a kill, definitely a good thing. Nas is teleporting back up top, but Sneaky Deeb's now with a clear-cut advantage. And he stayed to farm up as much as possible, and he will now be heading back. It's going to be very dangerous now that Nasus has no more escapes. He does have the Wither, which will help him a little bit, but once that's gone, Sneaky's just going to have his way with him at this point. Coming back, oh my, with a pickaxe and a longsword. I have not seen that. Uh, I think that might be the first time I've ever seen a Lee Sin back for a pickaxe and a longsword uh, together. This early in the game. So quickly a, go uh, a gold advantage for Lodo Faction. 8.9 to 7.4. Really taking it to math team. Not really much to say. The general just exerting all this pressure. Getting kills. And Zed just really struggling. Very far behind right now. Ari going very hard. Misses the charm though. If that charm had hit, that would have been a guaranteed kill. But Soul Seizures burns his flash. Manages to get out. Excuse me. But yeah, that all-in potential from Ari. Very dangerous. And again, I want to apologize to the stream. My connection is still very, very erratic right now. So, there's probably going to be more than a few uh, drop frames on this replay, but... Can't really do anything about it right now. Uh, after the break, uh, after the second game, I'll try to potentially get a reset on the stream see if I can sort that out but for now I'm just gonna have to uh, just gonna have to bear with it okay Zed picking up the second blue of the game for himself and yeah things pretty much resetting once again and it's gonna we're just gonna have to wait to see where the junglers make their next move any lane at this point wouldn't be a bad idea for the general to gank. If I'm Zed, I'm probably looking towards the solo lanes, uh, particularly mid, as Ryze has no longer a flash. Ari still has hers. And Spirit Rush is coming up very soon. Taking a look at the items. Well, actually, these are not in the right order. Taking a look at the items, double Dolans and a Vamp Scepter for Vayne. Draven is behind a Dolan's Blade for now. We'll see if he can make that up. Nas is popping ulti, pops the Wither, and Lee Sin will just back it up. But, quickly closing the gap is Zed. And yeah, he's dead. Not even going to bother. Well, his flash wasn't available, but he's not going to bother burning anything else, so... Good pick. Very good pick by Zed. Taking advantage of the lack of vision right there. 
The general trying to answer with another gank of his own. Still no flash up for Blitz, so he will he will go down. Well, actually, he burn he just burned flash, so there you go. My mistake. Rise coming down for a potential dive, perhaps, but looks like he's thinking better of it. Kind of walking in a dangerous direction, though. He could very well run. He could have ran right into Ari and Zed right there. It looks like they're going to try to bait this, but a bad idea. I mean, he saw Sneaky coming up, but that is just some mad disrespect right there. Mad disrespect. With no flash to save him in case of an emergency, that was very, very, uh, very sloppy. As I stated before, he was already walking in a semi-dangerous direction. And on top of that, it was warded, so he basically walked right into his death. I'm sure he was counting on the fact that Sneaky was coming, so they were probably going to try to kill them right there, but Sneaky was not close enough yet. So, miscommunication. And in the bottom lane, we see uh, Nasus taking the teleport. Nice hook onto uh, Vayne and the, the Sands will burn her down. Unfortunately, now that the pull is down, I don't think they can get anything else, so... They might try to make a play on the dragon, I'm not sure. They are moving in that direction though, yeah, it looks like they're gonna try for it. So, just like that, two deaths back to back for the little faction and this game is close again. Pretty much negating the earlier kills. And uh, Matthew must be deciding not to go for the Baron, since they don't have their smiter with them. And they don't have NASA Salt either, they had just used it, so they're just going to play it safe. Blitzcrank may get pinched on, but they don't see the Ari. Oh, they see her now. Bad. Very... Very... Well, not a bad charm, but just a real hasty charm. He probably should have tried to hold that for a little bit. And we see the Lotal Faction collapsing onto the Dragon. They do secure it, and Blitzcrank is going to die. So the Dragon problems continuing to plague... Um, Math Team plus Nick as... Lee Sin's gonna get a double. Yeah, that, that was, there was no doubt about that. He was gonna get that double. Nasus did not have ulti. So that was a wasted flash. Kind of stubborn flash too. He probably should have just known that the dive was lost and just uh, gave it up. Although to be fair, at that point, Lee Sin probably could have just chased him and killed him anyway. So he might have been committed at that point. So in the in this week's episode of the Game of Throws, throws back and forth, kills being given left and right, along with uh, objectives. Pretty crazy game. 3 to 7 is the score. The Lotal Faction jumped out to an early lead. They fed a couple kills back. But, uh. Matt Team Plus Nick just gave up a dragon and three kills. A double kill to Lee Sin on top of that. So. That is not good for them. He already has his Ravenous Hydra on deck at 1340. He's gonna be very hard to duel now. Too easy. And oh my gosh, that damage. And he doesn't even lose any life. Nasus is barely able to break the shield at this point. And uh, 97 CS up to 50, 59 on Nasus. Nasus is gonna have is gonna be hard pressed to to be able to do anything in lane now. Another no go on the Blitz hook. Creep blocks. OP. And the general passing off blue. And after that, they might try to make their way down. Uh, they should probably know that Zed's in the area. So they might try to bait something. Ari, though, has pushed her lane up and is going to try to roam, try to make a play. 
Zed has cancelled his back, so it looks like they're gonna try to potentially get some sort of uh, dive off. But Soul Seizures is on his way back. Will he get there in time, though, is the question. Ooh, pulling the general. That's not the best choice. Sniper Worm gets a nice fall off, does go down. But purple life bars are very low. A uh, double kill picked up by Lord Zed. And a double kill answered right back by Vayne. Flash is being burned. And an overall 3 for 2 trade. So Soul Seizures did indeed not get there in time. Nas is popping his ulti, but this time he knows that Zed is nowhere, nowhere near this time to get a gank off. And uh, both of them laughing at each other because they pretty much know that this lane's pretty much over. Nasus is just going to have be forced to hug his tower at this point. There's nothing he can really do. Once Wither is off cooldown, he can just hit the tower. And yeah, this tower will be going down. Uh, one more auto attack. So it's the first turn of the game going to the Lotal Faction. Sneaky Deebs is now going to play a little more aggressive. He is getting pinched on by three people though. So, oh, that Wither. Yeah, he's probably dead. Ooh, the Qs actually miss. Dragon's Fury going to try to come out. He's going to try to duel as many people as he can. Oh, and I actually thought that Ari was on her way, but she kind of turned around. So... Easily able to 2v1 them is Lee Sin. Zed being uh, only at a Madrid's Razor and a Cutlass, not interested in fighting uh, a Ravenous Hydra Lee Sin after he just saw his own Nasus go down. Mm, is he gonna flash for it? No, he does not have it up. If he had flash up, that probably would have been another kill. Lee Sin swinging around for some cheese but the cat lady is already gone that was a really the closest ranged grab I've ever seen and an immediate pulverized response from sniper worm So yeah, coming up on the 17 and a half minute mark, uh, the gold is 21.9 to 26.3 approximately. 6 to 10 is the kills and 0 to 2 is the turret count. Uh, Sneaky Deeves is becoming an unkillable force. We'll see how many... It'll be interesting to see how many uh, members of Math Team it'll take before they can finally kill him. Because they've already sent... Uh, Zed and Nasus, and that has not worked out at all. And we'll see when the Lotal Faction decide to make their next move. They definitely have the stronger uh, solo laners at this point. So, it would be good of them to press this advantage now and not let Nasus get farmed up. You never want to let Nasus uh, solo farm for free. That is solo Q 101. Especially for Nasus. The dragon has uh, respawned now. Little faction will probably be looking to take that as soon as they push this out. But uh, good call from Matthew plus Nick. They are pressuring the mid lane. And Soul Seizures can do Nathan's hot dogs to stop this. He's just going to have to let that go down. And Matthew plus Nick immediately pin pincering on for the dragon. Nasus' teleport is up, but I don't think they want to fight this. A hook over onto Lee Sin, but that is not the man that you want to pull. Oh, if that had landed. Nice shield in to the Cataclysm so that he could continue to do damage. And Draven just gets exploded. Exploded. Zed finds himself caught out. Soul Seizures is probably going to die from the dot anyway. But they do trade right there. And the shutdown gold comes down onto Zed. Nas is teleporting in. Trying to turn this. 
If he can get in range for the Wither, that is going to be a dead Sniper Worm. Oh, very nice flash. Oh, but the, the charm. She did have just enough mana for the charm. So, yeah, he will go down. So, a lot of resources burned, but definitely worth it for Math Team plus Nick. They really needed those kills. So the little faction kind of got a little too caught up in everything. The extended team fight uh, worked out pretty well for a uh, math team. They didn't get the dragon, but they are still getting some gold back, which is nice when you're behind. The little faction are going to have to be a little bit more careful. Soul Seizure is now starting to work towards some of that armor, going for that uh, frozen heart, most likely. That will serve him very well against uh, Zed and Draven. Speaking of Frozen Hearts, another Frozen Heart in the works for Nasus. Zed with that Blade of the Broken game, along with uh, the Brutalizer. Has not finished the jungling item yet, he's just going for the damages. And uh, Rogue Yokai with the Mor uh, Morellonomicon. And not sure what he's going to turn that blasting one to. Could be a bunch of things. Maybe a probably a death cap though, if anything. Looking at the 80 carries, Sato with the same build pretty much as last time, going for that PD, and Draven going for Bloodthirster into uh, attack speed item. What he builds it into is still a mystery. Could be either the Shiv or the Phantom Dancer as well. And uh, Sight Stones for the supports. What a surprise. Ooh, almost. Just a little out of range right there. But a good attempt at a pull. But that turret's gonna go down now for sure. Couple more hits. They could just look at it funny and it'll probably go down. Nasa's doing a really good job though of being able to find that time alone with the creeps that he needs. He's still very far behind Lee Sin, but he's getting there. The longer this goes on, the more it'll favor the dog. Nasus does scale infinitely with his Q damage. Then it should also be noted that aside from the uh, tenacity from the golem item, there is uh, no mercury treads yet for uh, the Lotal faction, so that wither will be doing its full effect. And Vayne will most likely be saving her cleanse either for the charm or for the wither. Soul Seizures gets caught out. Forcing Sniper Worm to pull into all five. Traps all five of them, but still not enough. Draven going super hard right now. Sneaky Deems trying to man up and kill as many people as possible. But it is not enough. And an overall three for one. Draven, even going as hard as he did, did not die. Sniper Worm and the General are both trapped under the tower. This is horrible for them. We'll see if they can outplay this. But no, the turret goes down before it can kill off Draven. So that is an effective ace right there. Five for one. So I don't know wh what went wrong there, but... Soul Seizure's getting caught out to start that fight meant that he did not get to contribute anything. And it kind of forced uh, Sniper Worm and the General to kind of all in right there, even though it wasn't the most ideal of times. And Sneaky Deeves does have the life steals and all that, but he is still going, for all intents and purposes, a glass cannon build. Does not have uh, any uh, defenses. So. He was able to survive for a long time, but it wasn't yeah. enough. Not enough to secure any other kills. And it was a good attempt by Sniper Worm and the General to try to outplay Draven at the turret, but it just didn't work out. So now this game is dead even. Only 800 gold separates these teams now. The turrets are actually in favor now of Math Team plus Nick. So, again, another big throw swing of momentum and gold. As we see now, Draven has a 
That basically got Draven a Last Whisper. That's how big that was for them. And now he's basically hit his core status. He's basically AD carry status where he can put out the deeps. And it looks like... I'm not really sure what Ari is going for. Probably at this point a DFG. Nas is still um, finding time to free farm, which is great for them. Still far behind the CS of Lee Sin, but he's reaching that that late game status slowly but surely, and he's and he's not dying as a result, which is always good. Lock into the Iron Solari being completed by uh, Blitzcrank, excuse me, not Sniper Worm, but by Nickel. And it looks like is there an Aegis in the works? Probably off of that Health Crystal. Probably an Aegis into Bulwark, Frozen Heart. On lock for soul seizures. Nasus will probably pick that up once he backs. Oh no, he actually opts for the Randuins instead. Very interesting. But yeah, once uh, Nasus gets that Frozen Heart and Randuins, he's going to be very tanky. He's going to be very hard to burst down, let alone uh, DPS down. So Lota Faction picking up themselves a free dragon, but this fight going very well for them. Ari dying right off the bat. Nice stun into the wall by Sato. Good positioning. And yeah, this is going to be another turnaround fight. Nobody going down for the Lota Faction. The general surviving. And Nasus is going to get chased down. Okay, so yet another very big team fight swing. Last time it was a 5 for all in favor of Math Team. This time it was a 4 for all in favor of the Lotal Faction. If Soul Seizures can just survive, if, if uh, Sato can just survive, then those fights are going to go their way all day, every day. They can just put out all the deeps. But the fact still remains, though, that although they did win that fight convincingly, there's still quite a bit of gold on the side of Math Team plus Nick uh, because of all those other uh, fights that went in their favor. So they still have the potential to team fight back and get a good pick. So if they can get a good pick off of Rise with a pull or an Ari charm, that is definitely going to help them out. And with Nasus Wither, the pulls and the charms are going to be free. They're going to be so free because of the movement uh, debuff. So the little faction can't get too comfortable. For those of you just tuning in, this is game two of the Low Summer League playoffs uh, brought to you by Esports Hawaii and the Oto faction. We have uh, Math Team plus Nick on the blue and the Lotal Faction in the purple. This is game two of the best of five. Lotal Faction already up one game to nothing. This game definitely a lot more competitive, a lot closer. This uh, roster switch up really working out in favor overall for Math Team plus Nick. Only down by about 5k gold, definitely still doable. And as I said, they already have most of their core items complete, particularly on Draven. The general going very, very hard. Oh, and a little bit of miscommunication right there. Ari tried to make a play with her ulti and charm and wasted both. Hitting air. Doesn't even get the, the ulti over the wall. <laughs> uh, that's, that's very unfortunate. So some big cooldowns burn right there, Cataclysm and the Spirit Rush. So we'll see how the Lotal Faction want to play this. Jarvan throwing the flag behind him so that he can E out just in case things get a little too hairy. Soul Seizures needs to be careful. Again, the pull is, is a big threat. He has one flash to dodge it, and then after that, he's pretty much... Uh, at Blitz's mercy if he's not careful. Can't underestimate that teleport Nasus either. They never want to get pinched from behind. 
Sneaky Deeb's doing a good job of keeping Nasus occupied, though, pushing that top lane out uh, very hard and forcing Nasus to clear it out. Why, thank you. So yeah, Draven's core build is now finished. Phantom Dancer is on lock. And uh, so it's still a toss up between the DFG and the Death Cap at this point. I would have to guess the Death Cap. But Ari has the components for both, so it could go either way. Math Team plus Nick now grouped up as a five. Sato pushing off bottom, so. He needs to hurry up and get back with his team. Math Team plus Nick looks like they're making a move for Baron, possibly? Yeah, they're posturing at it. They want to try and bait something. That bush is not warded. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, Sniper Worm getting hooked in. He's dead. He's so dead. Oh, what? How did he... Okay, I don't I don't know how they how he got out of that. But some big cooldown just got blown. Cataclysm locks up almost the entire team and Soul with great positioning comes around the backside and he's just gonna clean that up. And Vayne's still at full life. That is free. Blows the flashes just to make sure. And that last cannon shot from Rise takes him out for the ace. And the Lotto faction did lose a couple members, but overall, in their favor, their two carries are still alive. And they should be able to get a couple turrets. Probably won't get the inhibitor off of this, but it'll be close. Throws down the flag for a little more attack speed for the team. We'll see if they want to get greedy here. Home guard boots may start coming out from Blitz and from Draven. We'll see. No, home guard boots are not out yet, but they don't know that, so they're just going to play it safe and, and leave. But yeah, I'm very, very surprised. I know that Alistair uh, has it with his ulti will take uh, significantly less damage, but I'm still surprised that they weren't able to uh, burn him down. It seemed like a good idea, honestly. It was a free grab, and it was a free pick, but they just... Either they didn't uh, communicate properly and burn everything that they needed to, or Sniper Worm is just that much of a boss. And another free Dargan for the Lotal Faction. Kind of the proverbial cherry on the Sunday at this point, though. Lotal Faction are in, uh, once again in very dominating control up 15 to 20 22 to 15 and uh stretching the gold lead now to 50 53.4 to 45.1 let's try as they might math team plus nick just can't get the picks to work they've been catching some picks but yeah it just hasn't been working out for them haven't been getting the damage fast enough to secure the kills If that had been any other person for uh, the Lotal Faction, that probably would have been the kill, though. Uh, with all that CC and damage being put onto the onto Alistair. I'd like to just believe that it was the ulti that saved him. So, Sniper Worm being a good support, clearing out Baron. Good thing about Oracles now is that even if you do die... Uh, you still retain the oracles. It'll only go away once it has timed out. However, it does time out one minute sooner. So a little tit for tat right there. And here's where it's going to start. Once again, getting tricky for Math Team plus Nick. Uh, their inner turret has gone down finally. And uh, the gold lead has increased significantly since the last time they were even. So... They're really going to have to start worrying about Vayne, who has hit late game hyper carry status now with that last Whisper. Runic Bulwark also completed now from the General. Seraph's Embrace is also on lock for Soul Seizure, so a lot of late game uh, in this uh, hyper carry heavy team. A 
Ari waiting around the side, looking for an all-in, but the team doesn't even follow. That was very, very poorly communicated right there. As soon as I saw Ari wait by the corner, I knew what she wanted, but the team did not follow. So she just got destroyed. Big whiff on the grab, too. That probably would have just got, got him killed, though, honestly, if he had uh, gotten a pull right there. Pulling Rise probably wouldn't have did too much at that point. And here comes the dives. Natsipa's mm -hmm. Nick forced to scatter away. They can't fight anymore. Nas is kind of wasting his teleport. The turret is going to go down, and the inhibitor will follow regardless. And Draven also will go down, so they could actually keep pushing if they want to. They might swing up to the top lane though. Sneaky Deep's doing a good job of prepping that for them, knowing that they didn't need his help uh, to take the first inhibitor. So the second one will go down uncontested. Nice kickback onto Rogue Yokai by Lee Singa. And a beautiful double pulverize. It's gonna get that kill locked up. And Soul Caesar is just too tanky at this point. He got full charmed right there. But he was just so tanky it didn't matter. They did not have the damage. Draven was not alive. And it looks like the GG's are being said. Pretty easy right there. The, the, the general will go down in Jesus fashion for the team. Still three seconds on Draven. It's not really going to matter. The rest of his team is already dead. They can just finish this off and they will go up two to nothing in this set. And one more game and victory is theirs.